Welcome to High School Physics Explained and today we're going to do how well do you know relativity? So here are a series of multiple choice questions that relate to the concept of Einstein's theory of special relativity. As always, with each of these questions, pause the video, try the question out, and then I'll go through the answers. So let's start with the first one. Two spaceships are both traveling at relativistic speeds. Spaceship Beta shines a light beam forward as shown. What is the speed of the light beam according to the observer on Spaceship Alpha? Is it A, the speed of the light beam is equal to C, B, is the speed of the light beam less than C, C, is the speed of the light beam greater than C, and D, more information is required about relative speeds of the spaceships. Well, one of the fundamental important rules about special relativity is that they are based on two important postulates. Postulate number one says that for all inertial frames of reference, the laws of physics are invariant. That is, they don't change. Postulate number two states that the speed of light is constant for all observers in all frames of reference. And so that means, basically, is that if you see light, no matter what you are doing, no matter what the source of the light is doing, you will always measure it as the value of C which rounds to 3 by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. And therefore, this answer clearly becomes A. The speed of light beam is equal to C. It doesn't matter what beta or what alpha are doing. You will always see it at C. Question number two. In a thought experiment, a jet is traveling at 0.5 C relative to the ground towards a train that is traveling at 0.1 C relative to the ground as shown. What is the speed of the light emitted from the train's headlight as measured by the jet? Well, again, as I've stated to you before, the speed of light is always measured at C. So the only possible answer is D. A spaceship sitting on its launch pad is measured to have a length L. This spaceship passes an outer planet at the speed of 0.95 C. Which observations of the length of the spaceship are correct? I'll give you a moment to go through the answers. Well, there are a number of important consequences if we take that the two postulates are correct. That is, the speed of light is constant for all frames of reference and the laws of physics are invariant in inertial frames of reference. And they are time dilation, length contraction, mass dilation, and also the concept of simultaneity. In this case, we have a question about length contraction. And so an object that is moving will have the length that is contracted due to its relativistic motion. And so if you wanted to observe an object's length, you have to be in its same frame of reference, and that is L. But this spaceship is now moving at 0.95 C. Now, if you are on the spaceship, you are in the same frame of reference, so you will see no change whatsoever to the length of your spaceship. But an observer on the planet should see a length contracted. They see a value that is shorter. So therefore, the answer is A. The diagram shows a stationary spacecraft next to a building as seen by an observer across the street. A short time later, the spacecraft is observed to be traveling vertically at 0.8 C relative to the building, which diagram represents the appearance of the moving spacecraft as seen by the observer. I'll give you a moment. Well, again, this question is all about length contraction. And the important thing is, is that the length contraction only occurs in the direction of travel. And since the spacecraft is moving in an upward direction, then the length must be contracted only in the upward direction, which means it will appear squashed, but its width will not change. That therefore means only B is the possible answer because here the length is squashed, but its width is unchanged. The answer is B. An object of rest mass 8 kilograms moves at a speed of 0.6 C relative to an observer. What is the observed mass of the object? Okay, now this is all about mass dilation. And so what we have is that the mass of an object is equal to the proper mass divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now, knowing that this value here will 
always be less than one. Therefore, the mass over here is going to be greater than the proper mass. The proper mass is eight. And so what we have is eight over the square root of one minus. Now, V is 0.6C. And of course, that is all squared divided by C squared. Now, if you can see if you put this in terms of C, the mathematics becomes really easy because the C is squared and cancels out here. So you get 8 over the square root of 1 minus 0.6 all squared. The numbers are really helpful here because 1 minus 0.36 is 0.64. So you get 8 over the square root of 0.64. But the square root of 0.64 is equal to 0.8. And now you have an answer of 8 divided by 0.8, which is equal to 10. It's 10 kilograms, and so therefore the answer is B. A scientist at a particle accelerated laboratory observes the lifetime of a particle, subatomic particle, to be 1 by 10 to the negative 6 seconds when it is traveling at 0.9999c. What would the lifetime of the particle be? if it were stationary in the laboratory. I'll give you a moment to work this out. Now in this case, clearly what we are given here is the time here that is not the time in the frame of reference of the particle. It is the dilated time. And we know that the time, dilated time, is equal to the proper time divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. This is called the Lorentz transformation. Therefore, what we need to do is we need to rearrange this. And so the proper time, which is what we're interested in, as if it was stationary, is equal to the dilated time, which we already know to be 1 by 10 to the negative 6, multiplied by the square root of 1 minus, now v of course is equal to 0.9999c, and this is all squared, all over c squared. And then of course what we get here is 10 to the negative 6, and then what we have here is in brackets, we have the square root of 1 minus 0.9999 9999 squared. If you calculate that out, you get 1.41 by 10 to the power of negative 8 seconds, and therefore the answer is A. As you can see, this time is shorter than the time over here. The rest length of a train is 200 meters, and the rest length of a railway platform is 160 meters. The train rushes past the platform so fast that when observed in the platform's frame of reference, the train and the platform are the same length. How fast is the train moving? Again, this is simply an application of the mathematical formula where we have length contraction. And that formula, of course, is L is equal to L naught. And because it's contraction, it's multiplied by 1 minus V squared over C squared. Of course, the fact is, in this case, we are given both L and L naught, and we have to rearrange this. We know automatically that the contracted length is 160, and the proper length is 200. And of course, this is multiplied by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Now, if I clean that up, I get 160 over 200 is equal to the square root. Now, if you notice here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the c squared. So I'm going to have the square root of 1 minus, and I'm going to put here the x value. So it's going to be x squared, because the c squareds are actually going to be cancelling out. And it's going to make life a little bit easier mathematically. So 160 over 200 is equal to 4 over 5. I can now do that. Now, if I square both sides, I get 16 over 25 is equal to 1 minus x squared. Now, if I rearrange this, I get x squared 
is equal to 1 minus 16 over 25. And that, of course, is equal to 9 over 25. That means x is equal to 3 over 5, which, of course, is equal to 0.6. So there is the fraction of the speed of light. So as a result, the answer is A. A spaceship moves close to the speed of light relative to a planet. The rest frame length of the spaceship can be determined by an observer who is, and I'll get you to read through the answers. So if you want to measure the rest frame length of a spacecraft, you need to be in the spacecraft and you need to do an experiment within that particular spacecraft. So as you go through the answers, you can see that in order to do this, is either is on the spaceship or is on the planet. Well, in order to work out the rest frame length of the spaceship, you need to be on the spacecraft. So that automatically excludes B and D because only A and C allow you to be on the spacecraft. Then you have to perform an experiment on the spacecraft. Here, he or she is measuring the time for the light to travel between two points on the planet. That is not helpful because the fact is that the planet is in a different frame of reference. So that's not going to be helpful. In this case, he or she is measuring the time taken for light to travel from the front, uh, front to the back of the spacecraft. So in this case, the astronaut is on the spacecraft performing an experiment on the spacecraft and therefore works it out by measuring the time it takes for light to travel on the spacecraft. Well, how is that possible? Well, very simply, is that the distance, of course, is equal to the speed of an object multiplied by the time. In this case, they know that the speed is due to the light, so they see the time, of course, is what they've measured, and so that's how they measured the distance. Answer is C. Muons are subatomic particles which have a rest, have a lifetime of 2.2 microseconds, and when they are produced in the Earth's atmosphere, they travel at 0.9999 C. Using classical physics, the distance traveled by the muon in its lifetime can be calculated as follows. Which row of the table correctly summarizes the behavior of these muons? You need to understand that as far as the muon is concerned, the time of life is this particular value. This is basically their half-life of themselves as they would measure them if they were able to measure it. So in terms of the lifetime for the muon, their lifetime is going to be equal to 2.2 here and here. As far as the Earth's frame of reference is concerned, because they are traveling at a high speed, their lifetime is going to be much greater. And so therefore, because of the fact of the fact that they're traveling at a much faster speed, therefore, this is the only possible answer. And as you can see, that automatically means A is the only possible answer. As far as the muons is concerned, they are traveling 660 meters because the universe around them has contracted. But of course, as far as the Earth's frame of reference, they're traveling a much greater distance from our frame of reference. They're traveling through a whole amount of the upper atmosphere in many kilometers. And so therefore that makes sense as well. So, but clearly just by looking at the time, we've established that A is the only possible answer. Astronauts traveling at a velocity of 0.9 c to Alpha Centauri, Newtonian physics predicts that the journey would take 4.86 years. How many years will the journey take in the frame of reference of the astronauts? Okay, so this is really a clear question of asking what is the dilated time and what is the real or proper time? As you know, the dilated time and the proper time are related by this formula, 1 minus v squared over c squared. It tells you that they're traveling at 0.9c, and Newtonian physics predicts that this journey would take 4.86 years. Now, this 4.86 years is the time that we would measure, because that's Newtonian physics. We know the distance that we they have to travel. This is the speed they're going off at, Therefore, they would take 4.86 years to travel there. But of course, their time will be much less. So how many will they, they experience? They're going to experience a much shorter time. Why? Because of the fact of the time dilation.
And so therefore, when you look at the answers here, then when we're looking for shorter times, that leaves basically A, B, or C. They're all shorter over here. And here, of course, this is a much larger time, so that's not going to be correct. Can we work out mathematically? We're going to assume, of course, that A is probably incorrect. The value is way too low, but we can work it out. And so what we have here is that 4.86 is equal to T naught, which is what we're looking for, over the square root of 1 minus. Now, it's V squared over C squared, but we're going to put that, we know that the C's are going to be cancelling out. And so therefore, we can put here 0 0.9 squared. So therefore, T naught is equal to 4.86 multiplied by the square root of, now here's 1 minus, this is 0 0.81. So 1 minus 0 0.81 is 0.19. And when you calculate that out, you get 2.12 years. Therefore, the answer is C. Well, I hope that has helped you understand relativity a little bit better. Thanks for watching. Please like if you this video has been helpful. And by all means, please share if you feel there are any of your peers who would benefit from this video. And if you'd really like to watch any more of my videos, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.